Hey guys, Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from TheShrinkingPastor.com. Together, the three of us, we're Markwood Ben's Breakfast Club. Welcome, Welcome. back to uh, Wednesday episode. And um, let's just get to the smoking. This is this is kind of funny, at least I, I think it's funny. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to be smoking in my Country Gentleman Magna Cob some Cornell and Deal's Founding Fathers. Now, when we were in Chicago, I got to looking at this... Um, 10. No, 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 no. This isn't Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. I made a note on the bottom of this. Um, we were looking at what Cornell and Deal had to offer, and I'm looking, of course, for an aromatic. And I picked this up, and it says, uh, a delightful aromatic infused with the flavor of an exotic fruit originally from the Middle East that was a particular favorite in the 18th century and found growing on the grounds of Mount Vernon, Monticello, and around the homes of other founding fathers. Hmm. So it's a flavor, uh, the, the fruit was a flavor that was commonly known by those folks. And um, so I read that and I thought, well, that sounds good. Let's pick that up. And we haven't opened this Tomato one yet. Or avocado. And as soon guess. as we got back to the shop and I went to put my uh, tobacco away, I, I realized that, hey, look at this. I have a tin of Cornell and Deal's founding fathers. So this, at one other time, appealed to me. And when was that? <laughs> Taps. Earlier this year. I bought this tin earlier this year from Cornell and Deal and this tin in, in Chicago. That's funny. But I opened this up here, um, and it's really dried out. So it was probably banging around in my van for some time. So we're going to open the other tin up. But last Wednesday, we learned how we can rehydrate. A good we, method we, for rehydrate. We will, and we'll, we'll end up putting these together in a, a mason jar, which will be a good way of storing them long term. So we're opening that up. Give that a whiff. That smells like fruit for sure. Gee, really? I wonder why. <laughs> it's chocolatey. Chocolatey. Yeah, it smells chocolatey. And it smells like um, like raisins. Yeah. Or prunes. Um, yeah. That, you know, that fruit smell is going to come to me because it... What is that smell? That's a I've smelled that fruit before. I'd like to know what that fruit is. Raisins? No, it's not raisins. I have smelled that fruit. It's a good smell. It is. It smells really nice. I don't know how it smells. I'm, I'm at a loss for what that smell is because I've had it. Did you smell the chocolate? It smells chocolate. No, I did not. I didn't smell the chocolate. But what is that fruit? Smell the chocolate. Hey, load up. I want to smoke this now. Oh, I'm just sniffing. I'm anxious. <laughs> so, uh, what are we going to talk about today, boy? I don't know. What are we going to talk about? Um, I would love to talk about some tools. Do we have a few minutes to talk about tools? No. Next week. Next week or Friday? Friday. Okay. So, we won't talk about today is to Today is tobacco day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> tobacco and pipe day. So, all right. As, I as got, we set up in the rules. Let's, I got a let's, topic let's talk about that for a moment. Hang on. Let, let's, let's, let's address real quick. <laughs> Because, so, again, in, in the name of transparency, we have to film these way in advance. Um, by the time you're watching this, we filmed this probably three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Because of the upcoming trip, we don't know what our schedule's going to be on the trip. We don't know how often we're going to be able to pull away from our wives to, to smoke and to film and then editing, yada, yada, yada. So, for... Safety's sake, we're, we're pre-recording all of these videos. And so, today that we're recording is the Thursday after the very first Wednesday we decided to do two videos a week. And so, so far, the feedback has been very angry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ironically, though, the viewer count... Has been good. Right. More people are taking the time to click on and at least start the video. So watch the video than than normally would after one day. All right. So we have we have like 140 views as of recording. Normally by this time we would have 70 or 80. So almost almost double. And what's also ironic is some of the people that have said your videos are too long are now saying, man, this video is just way too short. So you know. Do we so, know that they're the same people? 
Yeah. I know. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, looking at you, Mike Miller. <laughs> looking at you. <laughs> but um, the part of our intention for this is, is we have heard from several people that our videos are too long. I absolutely understand some of the critiques now with the short video that it's just not long enough for smoking. You mean that smoking. short one on Friday? The short one. The sh Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, we went... <laughs> Went long on that. Uh, poor communication pre-filming. But uh, it, so I understand that that we've gotten you guys in a routine. We've gotten in a routine. It's awkward for us to say, "Oh, well, that's all," or you know, to say, oh, "We we can't talk about the tools right now because it's not the day to talk about the tools." Even though in ten minutes, when this is done, we're gonna <laughs> be talking about the tools. Get, getting in off straight is terrible. I apologize. Um, but we decided before we decided today, having seen just one day's worth of feedback, that we wanted to stick with this plan. We we want to see how it works in the longer term, and when we come back from our trip, depending on the feedback and continued feedback we get, we are open to going back to the old style of of once a week so, long videos. So we're asking for an opinion now. That's right. Tell us tell us what you think. This Friday is going to be another short one. Um, and then uh, next week, who knows? All right. All right. So, tobacco and pipes. An interesting topic for you. I'm going to like to, to, to mull over a little bit. I posted something over on the uh, Aristocob Facebook page that uh, raised some passions, and some of these folks uh, also saw this post. There are some folks in Great Britain that have, that's England, to those of you. Those are not the same place. Oh, wait, cramp. Oh. Okay. This Go is ahead. A, this is a foot cramp this time. Oops. This is unusual. Um, over in, uh, in Great, Britain, Great Britain, which is, I guess, more than England, right? Right. They've proposed this idea. You can be that... British and not English. If you're English, you are British. I have English friends. They'd be mad if I didn't point it out. Because I always got razzed for it, so. Yes, we are separated by a, a common language, us and our buddies in Great Britain, as well as England. <laughs> anyway, someone has proposed this idea that people who were born in the year 2000 and, be, and since 2000, that they should never be allowed to legally purchase tobacco. Okay, so this is 2014. That means a 14-year-old kid is getting the word now uh, after w growing up watching his dad and uncles and family members enjoying their pipes mm -hmm. that he will never legally be allowed to purchase tobacco. What do you think about that, boy? Oh, I think it's... I think it's silly. I think if you're going to do something like that, if you're going to do that, then I think it would it would you would have to start with children even younger, because by 14 you already have preconceived notions and have already seen enough things. So you know if they said children after 2014 will not be able to legally smoke, but ultimately it probably isn't going. It's not going to. So it's it's not going to work. Purchase tobacco, right? Not necessarily smoke. So, I may be able to share my jars of Lane One Q. Right, right. But 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 my grandchildren may not be able to legally purchase tobacco. I mean that's just splitting hairs. Well, it isn't. It isn't. But it's sort of like uh, compare this to prohibition here in the U.S., where um, uh, alcohol was illegal to purchase for consumption. Um, and of course, that stopped all alcohol consumption in the United States, didn't it, boy? I mean, the same is true. That it's the same argument right now for marijuana. It's the same argument for it can be made for any drug. It's the same argument for e-cigs. And what's going to happen when they say you can't buy or it's the use same e argument in my house for Oreos? Yeah, <laughs> you know, you can't you can't have the Oreos, son. Um, well. Screw you, Dad. I'm going to have some anyway. Because... I'm talking more about my, my Oreos and my wife, but... You know, because... Because... Oreos are a milk's favorite cookie. This has been proven. 
Oreos, for a short time, when they, they were changing the, the cream filling, they were concerned that the Oreos were becoming lactose intolerant. Mm. And uh, so they had to switch that back just, you know, to keep milk sure. in the, the Oreos together. No, I mean, you know, I read, it, read an article recently about what's going to happen to e-cigs if suddenly they're banned and totally illegal. And, and the guy in the article said, black market, black market e-cigs, you know. Uh, here's a flashlight, and here's how you put this filament in there, and definitely don't take this home <laughs> and put cotton in it and juice on it, because that would be bad. Well, juice I mean, becomes illegal. Do you think uh, the, the the main ingredients of of uh, juice is going to become illegal? No. Well, you won't be able to buy icing for cakes right. anymore. Uh, children will not be able to use our nebulizers anymore. Right. And uh, you can go out. There are already people that are buying the little uh, um, little packets of chewing tobacco, snus, yeah, and soaking that in alcohol to extract the uh, the nicotine, the nicotine, really, and making their own e juice. Wow! So Clever. hey, there we go. I mean, I think that now they'll make that uh, illegal too. I just think you know one of the arguments that we have in North Carolina is we, like many states in the U.S., um, recently adopted Common Core, and it was a complete and utter failure, and now they're getting rid of it uh, one year later. And well, one of, about getting rid of it. They, I think they've already voted. They're getting rid of it. We're going to keep it for one more year, and then they're going to implement some unknown program that they still haven't decided on. The problem is, when you say, from kindergarten to 12th grade, we're going to change everything that you've ever done immediately and not give any guidelines for it, that's a problem. Whereas, And it's not going to work. If you say, okay, kindergarten, we're going to start with you and we're going to change things. And then next year, kindergarten and first grade. And then move it progressively as the students move. Then you, 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 get, that, you get that acceptance as time goes on. You know, so I think in this case, if they wanted to do it, and I, I don't agree with it. I think it's silly and stupid. But I want to make that clear. But if they're going to do it to say now, oh... You can't do this if you're 14. 14 Children years, born 14 from years this are already moment. smoking in, in the UK. You know <laughs> That's true. I mean, they're, they're drinking at 16. They're smoking at 14. Come on. So they're, that's the wrong way to go about it. If they say, okay, from here on, at this point, it's going to be illegal. Then as the children are raised, there's that expectation set. All right. What do you all think? I I'd be curious to hear. This would be a great one. If not, uh, if you have a YouTube channel... How about a, a video response to this? I really want to hear what people have to say about this topic. We'll uh, we'll we'll put a link to that article, and um, on Friday we're going to make some of your wood wishes come true. So see you Friday morning, seven thirty. <laughs> Bye. Make it a great day, guys. <laughs>